My name is Anthony Huberman, and I'm um, the curator of this exhibition uh, at the Contemporary with work by Richard Artschwager. He's an artist who uh, ha is a really an established figure in the, in the history of American art. This is an artist who uh, is going to turn 87 years old this year. He's really a, 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 a very well recognized and established figure, but at the same time, um, you, somehow, mysteriously, you don't end up seeing that much of his work in, in museums. Art Schwager, one of the things that it draws me to him as an artist is that he really is, um, he's very hard to pin down. You know, he, he has been working since the 50s, initially as a cabinet maker, you know, not even really as an artist, and then he gradually started participating in the, in the art community and in the art world, and, and then he started making sculptures, and he started making and then the furniture sculptures, and so then he was kind of grouped in with um, uh, pop art in a way because his references were industrial, commonly found materials, uh, but then he started also being grouped with minimal art because the forms he were making was very minimal, square, precise, you know, kind of geometrical shapes. Uh, and then he kind of was grouped together with conceptual artists because of how kind of detached the work seemed and how kind of, um, you know, kind of non-flashy and, and kind of mute the work looks like. And, 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 he, and he does fit all of those categories and he also fits, fits none of them. And he, he somehow managed to work throughout all the, these years and in conjunction with all these kind of sub-movements or genres and um, come out of it as, as an active participant and as an a, a established figure, but somehow still independent from all of those groups. And that, um, there's a kind of maverick quality to his work in that sense, uh, that he's able to be both kind of um, uh, part of the conversation in all those levels and also completely his own distinct voice. And so that really drew, drew me to his work. Um, on the occasion of this show, uh, I was eager to kind of experiment with, or take this opportunity, because this is not a Richard Archwager retrospective, and to not try to pretend like it's a retrospective, so instead to really make a focused selection of a very specific part of his practice. And I think one of the, one of the, the, the part of his practice that has been going since the very early years, since the, the mid-60s, uh, when he was really at the early stages of making art, um, but that hasn't really, is not necessarily the, 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 the side of his work that people associate him with, are these works that we're showing here that are made with, with uh, mostly rubberized horse hair. So Art Schweiger's most recognizable work are um, uh, these Formica sculptures, you know, where he makes these um, furniture-based shapes, and we have some of them uh, in the show, a table, a chair, um, that are also furniture, but usually he makes them in these kind of formica-covered wood uh, sculptures that, that remove the usefulness of them as a chair or as a table and turn a, a useful object into just an object, uh, which has this kind of ambiguous nature of how is it useful, is it useless, and kind of manages to, to hover that line. Um, but they're always very precise, very clean, very well made. Um, so, and that's kind of usually what people associate with his work. His hair pieces that we're, we're showing here incorporate some of those same objects, but the material is, uh, that he uses to, to turn them into something else is completely different. So rather than being very precise lines and very specific, um, in the kind of minimalist tradition of a specific object. In this case, by making objects with hair, uh, he's making them much more blurry, and he's very, he's interested in playing with this idea of an object being out of focus. How do you take an image, take a, or an object, and kind of make it in, re in real life, make it three-dimensionally, but somehow have it maintain its out of focusness, how to have it maintain its, its kind of place of hovering between being a thing and being a chair, or being a sculpture and being a chair, or being useful, being useless, being something that you can hold on to and, and know what to do with, and being something that you 
don't really know what to do with and have that blurriness, have that out of focusness be in a way literalized by having the actual material that you make it with make it literally, visually blurry and out of focus because that's kind of what the hair does. Um, Art Schwager talks about how a lot of these figures uh, here that we see uh, in, in, on the wall began as um, kind of scribbled sketches that he would make in his notebook of figures, you know, that would, that would be kind of really quickly drawn. Um, or some of them are little clippings of little photographs of figures that are taken from newspapers. And the act of blowing them up to life size, which these are, if you imagine a, a really a scribbled sketch blown up to life size, you can imagine that that sketch would be totally out, out of focus in that same sense. So as a way of kind of maintaining that sense of, of a scribble, uh, when, you, when, you, when you transfer it to being life-size, the, the way to, to maintain its scribbleness or its out-of-focusness would be to use hair um, as a way to, to, to kind of connect those two processes. Um, so, you know, Art Schwager's work and his, 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 his life or his career as an artist and his practice in general has always managed to be one of kind of, of contradiction. One where art, and I think this is one of the things that's so wonderful about art in general, is, it's, is the fact that it, it's, it's, its grammar is one of paradox, you know? Uh, an artwork oftentimes succeeds when it manages to be its opposite, when it manages to be both here and not here at the same time, or both seeable and invisible somehow at, at the same time, and where those opposite poles and those contradictions managed to coexist. And, um, and I think Art Schwager manages to do that very well in these, in these sculptures in the sense that they're very specific and very precise, but that they're also completely blurry and unspecific and out of focus and kind of um, impre imprecise in, in that sense. He's even called it, uh, he, um, uh, in his own words, this idea of, of a, of a Im, Im, imperfect precision, uh, in a sense, managing to, to really be both of these. Gegenwärtig, aber ungenau, which is present, but not precise. Well, you can make it precise, you, you can have hard edge or soft edge. Mm -hmm. This happens to be uh, soft edge, but, this, but the edge is all over. I mean, it's, it consists of edge. You know, I think this show, at the end of the day, and Art Schwager's work in general, is really about looking. It's about perception. It's about the act of per perceiving images and objects, and how, as an artist, he can confuse or conflate or bring together the act of, uh, or the experience of seeing a picture versus th seeing a thing versus touching a thing. I think these hair pieces immediately connect looking with touching. I think when you look at them, you immediately kind of think about what they feel like and, and that merger of, of, of the senses. You know, Art Schwager always talks about how his work often turns the accessible into the inaccessible. You know, turns a chair, which not only is accessible to be sat in, but it also is accessible being a recognizable object we all know what to do with, to an inaccessible thing, where one, we can't sit on it, and two, it kind of doesn't quite look like a chair anymore, so we don't quite know what to do with it because it kind of looks like something we know, but also it doesn't. So that moment of recognition or accessibility has been flipped over into being one of non-recognition and inaccessibility. Um, and uh, I think Elad Lastry's work does that as well with very recognizable objects, images, kind of tabletop still lives. You know, I think we immediately recognize in his work an iconography that goes back to, you know, whatever, you know, early century painting. Th there's some really provocative and, and, and interesting kind of overlaps between the two artists, and between the sh two shows, despite the fact that they're from such different backgrounds, of such different generations, and work with such different materials. Um, I think this is an opportunity to be able to see how um, putting these two exhibitions alongside each other somehow managed manage to kind of uh, enliven both of them in, in perhaps unusual ways.